probabilistic models like Markov chains are very common in game theory. In this video, I want to look at very simple games of chance, though the theory does extend to more complicated games. I want to build a useful and possibly morally interesting example called the Gambler's Ruin. I'm going to model a very simple game of chance. In this game, there is a set stake that can be won or lost in each round, each time step in the model. In each round, there is a winning and losing probability, which doesn't depend on anything else. And the player starts with some multiple of the stake, which will give the vertices on the graph. Then, finally, there is a stopping condition. The player stops either when they get to zero stakes, or when they get to some winning number of stakes. I'll start with a winning condition of four stakes, and this gives me a five vertex model. The player can be at zero, one, two, three, or four stakes. At zero and four stakes, the game is finished. In the Markov chain, this is re represented by a probability one of staying at that vertex. For the middle three vertices, there is a probability of winning, going up a stake, and losing, going down a stake. W is the winning probability, and L is the losing probability. Here is the stochastic matrix for the simple game of chance. All I need to put in for a stochastic model is the winning and losing probability is W and L. Let me start with a perfectly even game, 50% winning and 50% losing. A coin flip, if you will. I asked a computer for the dominant eigenvalues. This is a little tricky since there are actually two linearly independent eigenvalues. The problem is that this matrix is actually not irreducible since there is no path between vertex 0 and vertex 4, they're both dead ends. But here are the two eigenvectors. These make sense. If a player is at the final losing or winning state, they will stay there. However, what if they start in the middle? The final state will be some linear combination of these eigenvectors, some probability of the final winning and the final losing state. What linear combination? Well, for this Markov model, I'm going to have to rely on actually calculating the matrix action to understand this. Here is the calculation of the state after 20 iterations. That won't be a perfect final result, but will give me a pretty good idea of what's going on. I've done this for three starting points, starting from one, two, or three stakes. And this is something I can interpret. If I round to whole percentages, or even tenths, the situation is pretty clear. Starting with one stake, there's a 25% chance of winning and a 75% chance of losing. Starting with two stakes, there's an equal chance of winning and losing. And starting with three stakes, there's a 75% chance of winning and a 25% chance of losing. That seems pretty reasonable. Now I can ask the interesting questions. What is the effect of changing the winning, the individual round winning and losing probabilities on the final winning and losing probabilities? If I make the game slightly unfair, say winning at 48% and losing at 52%, how much will it change the final percentages? Well, I can run the model again. I changed the fairness of the game by 2%. The effect on the final winning percentages is about 3% starting with 1 or 3 stakes, and about 4% starting with 2 stakes. So the effect of this unfairness is slightly exaggerated in the final probabilities. What about if I made the game very unfair? Let me set w equal to 0.35 and l equal to 0.65, and I'll run the system again. Again, the results are exaggerated. A game that is 65% to lose in each round leads to a 78% chance of losing overall when starting with two stakes. Now let me return to the fair game, with W and L both at 0.5. Instead of changing the fairness of the game, I'm going to change the stopping condition. Let's say players always start with two stakes, but I'll change the number of stakes at which the player stops playing. In the original game, having two stakes led to a winning percent of 50% overall. So let me can increase the stopping condition to five stakes instead of four. Here's the new matrix with the action after 20 iterations on the starting vector with the stakes. This hasn't entirely stabilized after 20 iterations, but I can see that the winning percentage has dropped from 50 to somewhere around 39. Now I'll increase the stopping condition to six states and run the system again, going to more iterations to make it st stabilize. Well, the winning percentage now has dropped to 33. And I can continue this process, though doing the calculations even by computer does become pretty tedious. However, I hope this is enough to make the point. 
if I play a perfectly fair game with fixed starting stakes, then as the stopping point increases, the winning chance from the fixed starting point will drop. In the limit, as the stopping condition goes to infinity, the winning chance will drop to zero. If I take the limit and let the stopping condition go to infinity, it actually doesn't matter what the starting number of stakes is, the winning percentage will still eventually drop to zero. And this is called the gambler's ruin model. It says that even if you play a perfectly fair game indefinitely, you will eventually lose with 100% probability. If the stopping condition is high enough, then it doesn't matter that the game is fair, eventually you always get to zero. 